What is good, Shanti Food Gang? Back in Bad Network with yet another Madden video, man. And today we going through quite a long journey as we go through year, what is it, six, seven? Year seven of the franchise, man. And it's been, it's been a great one. If we come over here and look at the coaching stats, as you can see here, as we sort by winning percentage, I am <laughs> Coach Smooth is up there in the top three, a 53 and 43 career record, four winning seasons, 16 and one in the playoffs, four and oh in the Super Bowl. We're going to try to go a fifth season, but this season is a little bit different. It will be completely and utterly simulated. The only thing that we might play is the Super Only thing we'll play is the Super Bowl if we get to it. Other than that, we're going to see if this team can do it on the, completely on their own. I mean, I'm not really saying I improve as much. I only play maybe two games a year and I play the playoffs. And I can still lose on the sticks. It's not like this is on a super easy, mega difficulty. You saw some of those games we were losing. A lot of those games were close. I'm not on like this extremely easy difficulty. I'm on the most realistic sliders I could find off of the Madden forum. So here we go. We're going to see what we can do. We're going to go ahead and start with the cuts first. I've already got it written down what I want to go ahead and do. So we're going to go ahead and speed through these. All right, here we go. Set up the season goals. I say our season goal for this year, make the playoffs. We're gonna commit to it. Um, and basically, I'll show you the stuff in between the weeks. If there's something important, if there's a big player I saw in the scouting reports, if there's some kind of big breakout uh, opportunity, I'll let y'all see it. But other than that, we're gonna pretty much just be going box score to box score. Um, might jump into a, a game in the season if I see it's really, really impactful. We'll jump into it, similarly to the fourth quarter. If there's a clutch moment at the end, we watch it. But up, uh, other than that, let's go ahead and get straight into the business. And we started off the season already with a big division loss. Huge day offensively. They just got a couple more points early and probably just had better use of their field position. As you can see, 420 yards to 388. Uh, we had better yards on rushing and passing. They just had the better field position. Four sacks, uh, that'll, that'll do it. Offensive line got to play a little bit better. Of course, we're missing our starting center and our starting right guard. So... That's a big worry right now. 393, two touchdowns, 314, a touchdown and a pick. As for the run game, you can see like dang near everybody scored a rushing touchdown. DeAndre Swift, 68 with a touch. Singletary got a touch. Their backup, Jelani Richards, got a touch. One of our backups, Kendrick Sanders, got him a touchdown. Starting power back now as we obviously lost. Uh, I forgot his name already. Was it Geis? Yeah, Darius Geis. Lost Darius Geis, so now Kendrick Sanders takes over that power back role. And already right, first game, three for three to the touchdown. That's about what we'll probably get. Dexter, 8 for 91, leading the way. That, hey, I'm happy to see that. You know, A.R. Brown's got to pick up the slack. Jameson Crowder is no longer here, so it's going to be up to him and Mims to really put the, the team on their back. And if Dexter can help out too, now I'd like to see him help out and win, but we'll see later. Deami Brown getting a, a touchdown here today. That's probably got to be one of the first of his career. Stephon Diggs, we gave up two to him. Expected. No, no more Jair Alexander. So now we only have really one strong cornerback on our team. 11 tackles by Deshaun Elliott. A sack coming from Clyde Claxton. Ed Oliver. Oh, that's their, that's their team. A sack coming from Quentin Williams and Otis German, as well as any interceptions. No siree. So, got to pick it up next game. We got to fix some things. And that is how you bounce back from a dub, from an L, baby. We come back with a dub. Gave up a fourth quarter touchdown, but it was not enough. 21 to 14 dub here against the Patriots. That's the that's the team I'm looking for right there. 256, two touchdowns and an interception from Justin Fields outplaying his counterpart. As we've done so many times, Zach Wilson has just been eh. I think he's maybe had like one good game against us in his career. 153, two touchdowns. We sacked him three times. DeAndre Swift went off for 88 yards. And not really getting that even carry split that we were with Geis, but Sanders is doing all right. And here you go again, leading us. Dexter, 7 for 85 with a touchdown. You see Antonio, or Amon Ross St. Brown, 7 for 77. Denzel, 6 for 61. We're getting production all over the field. Deami Brown with yet another touchdown. And then on defense, as we go to adjust our stats, Sly Cooper led us in tackles with seven. And we did have two sacks by Quentin Williams, one by Darius Stills. An overall really beast the game, and we need to keep that up. Let's get a two-game win streak going. As we're about, before we go and get into this game, we will finally be getting Nolan Reagan back. Uh, as well as, apparently, he got hurt in the middle of last game, DeAndre Swift. It must have been just like a early injury or maybe a late injury that took him out for the rest of the game. And I don't know why my depth chart was like that, so I got to fix that before we get into this next box score. 
Here we go. That win streak I was talking about had to come through late, 10 to 15 in that fourth quarter, but we did win 34 31. It looks like it's a very big offensive game, so defense can't be credited for none of this. 337 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick for Justin Fields. We held two of the 397 with two touchdowns. We also got to the quarterback six times. Pass rush hasn't been something that's been a strong suit of the team uh, by any means, but Anytime that we can get some pressure, I'm happy about it. The under swift three for 115 is a touchdown. I told y'all. Slot locking up his side. You see DeAndre Hopkins down here. Asante Samuel Jr. Coaches meeting. Now, speaking of defense, Elliott, Cooper, led in tackles, and then sacks. We so we got Franklin Myers, Williams, Page, Wilkins, and a half for it. Half for the DBs. Okay. Derek Davis, Darius Steels as well. I'm about to say half of the DBs, they came in for like a combined DB tackle or something in the backfield. I'm all for it. They sent like a safety corner blitz at the same time. No wonder Terrence Marshall has 186 something yards. And somehow amidst the good dubs that we've had, two straight wins, we do have a frustrated receiver. Amon Ron St. Brown still ain't pleased with the amount of touches he's getting. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna try to get him involved, but he should really go talk to uh, Justin Fields about that. I'm gonna say whatever to keep him happy because his contract up again. You know we had a franchise tag him again, so hopefully we can get a deal done this time. Before we get into this next game, we are, I'd say about 100% now as we get Wyatt Teller back too. And we was winning games without him. We dang sure we gonna win some with him. Let's get this dub. We playing the Bengals, so this is a rematch of the AFC Championship game, shooting for like three of our four Super Bowls. All right, I might've been a little overconfident through the last game. We lose this one here, 30 to 35. Joe Burrow finally get his revenge back on us. 316, three touchdowns. We got to him five times, but still didn't matter. 263, three touchdowns and a pick for Justin Fields. Both running backs went off. Over 100 yards for both. Two touchdowns for both as well. Uh, receiving wise, Amonse Brown, we got you involved and we got the L, bro. 11 catches, 118 yards. I hope that was worth it because we didn't win. Dexter down here with one touchdown. Freeman in the backfield, two for 50, up for two touchdowns. And we go over to defense. Looks like German and Asante Samuel Jr. both with 10 tackles. Samuel had to make 10 solo tackles. That's how I know it was a very long day up there in coverage, but he was letting everybody get open high. But got to bounce back here. Defense has been slacking off these last couple games. And we see here it's hurting us. Got to get back right. All right, this is not a good direction. This is not where we wanted to go. We lost another one here, 24-27. A late touchdown blew it, so this was all on the defense. Uh, they gave it up here to Drew Locke. Drew Locke. If you don't know why I say his name like that, go watch my challenge videos on Madden 21. Drew Locke. 265, though, a touchdown and interception. 319 and touchdown for uh, Justin Fields. Uh, we did get to him five times, so the pass rush is there. We're just not... I just don't think we're covering the receivers well enough when it matters. Uh, we did get two rush touchdowns here from the backups, Freeman and Sanders. Uh, looks like receiving wise, Ricky Peak went off. Uh, AR Brown, six for 97. Dexter, seven for 85. If I had to guess, it's probably we're getting exposed with the fact that now we only have Sly on one side and Santa Samuel Jr. just ain't ready for prom time on the other. But I don't, I don't know what's going on. It's the defense's problem to fix right now, though. Because the offense has been scoring pretty good, been moving the ball pretty well. I haven't seen too many turnovers. We just got to get the defense back right. Another close game here. Came down to the wire. We dropped 17 in the fourth. Just too much of a slow start. And once again, the defense is just, I don't know. He was giving up a whole bunch of yards and a whole bunch of points. 275, four touchdowns. Fields is having a great game. Uh, readjusted to his new offense that we we're running. Like I said, we were running New Orleans on offense. And right now we're running Cleveland's defense. That might be the issue. We might have to switch back. Uh, Greco, 229, two picks for himself. We allowed Derrick Henry to go off for almost 150 with two touchdowns. Yeah, today was not a good run day. They had three running backs go off today. Receiving-wise, A.R. Brown, three touchdowns added to his season, nine for 114. He's been doing a great job leading. If we could just get some defense to help out the offense, I'm telling you, this team would be in a... A different role, 12, uh, 12 tackles for Otis German, um, sacks wise. Looks like we didn't get to the quarterback at all today. That is not a good, that is not a good sign. As you can see here, we got somebody that wants to break out. I can't tell who. Amon Ross St. Brown, four touchdowns for 200 plus yards receiving. 
I do hope he gets that. I kind of thought he already was X Factor though. Was was I tripping? Let me pull up my lineup real quick. Yeah, he's only superstar. Okay, so this will be his jump up to superstar X Factor. Like I said, he just had three touchdowns. I don't see why you can't get four. I'm rooting for you. Like superstar X Factor receiver, that would be nice to have to match up with Justin Fields as well. Um, we're gonna slow down Kenneth Murray Jr. And it will come at a time against the Chargers where we need a dub heading into the bye week. If the defense don't get right today, we might see that switch back to the New Orleans defense uh, coming out of the bye. All right, yeah, this is really the defense to fix. They gave up 17 points in the fourth quarter to blow the game for us. And in our last five, they've given up 30 or more points four straight times. So 288, three touchdowns, two picks there. Our offensive line got to keep Justin Fields up off his feet as he got sacked five times. Dalvin Cook went off, one touchdown, 99 yards. Receiving wise, AR only five for 70, so I know he didn't get his upgrade. Uh, defensively, you see Cooper led in tackles. Ain't never good when the DB leads in tackles. Sacks wise, we did finally get one from Franklin Myers, Cooper, and Kenny Edwards, the young guy that's been, I think he's our fourth, yeah, he's our fourth defensive tackle. Trying to look to build him up into the ranks of where the other three are at. He got his first half sack here of the season today. And then INT wise, Otis German and Jonathan Moody. We want to see our DBs get more involved. Cooper. But it's our lead in Cooper. But as we take a quick look at the standings coming into the bye week, the Bills are 6-0. and It's going to be tough to catch them at 2-5, and but, I mean, we can do it. We've gone on some pretty good runs before. As you see me coming over here, we're going to go ahead and change the scheme up. We will go back to New Orleans. Get it there. Ah. Ah. Where are they at? Oh, there you go. New Orleans on offense. New Orleans on defense. Uh, we just became the New Orleans Saints. But it was a defense that worked well for us last year, so we're going to see if that change around can stop them from giving up 30 points a game. Uh, DeAndre Swift was frustrated after the last game, winning more touches. He got his more touches. We still caught the, law, the L, so, I mean, it's some more XP for him. Had a players-only meeting, and we did not get the requirement. One of three interceptions. I'm sure if we got three and still lost, it would have been bad. So there goes that one. The breakout teammate chance, once again, like I said, he, he, just, he just didn't have it today. And as we go ahead and come into the bye week, we do got to go ahead and check on these contracts. Amon Ross St. Brown, we already knew he was up. We we're going to give him this five-year, 117 mil. We ain't going to play around about it. Ah, uh, he want more money? No, Reagan wants three years. I'm going to see if I can extend it to four. Save a little cash space and keep him around a little bit longer. He's a very good center. Uh, keep the money about the same, and he wants more money. The other contract I'm going to offer today is going to be Stephon Page. I'm going to try to get him for a third year, uh, get him into his 30s, and then probably after that point, he'll probably be done with the team. We'll keep the money the same. So far, that hasn't really worked too well. And for him, it will work. We, we got Stephon Page back. Great. All right, here we go. We have scouted the entire first-round draft class, plus a couple extras that I guess were first-round and their projections slipped back. So far, I mean, it's been a pretty good class. Most of them first round talents like they are projected. A couple sliding back into the second round, but you see a lot of quarterbacks basically up here early. It's really a scattered position though. It's not even really offense or defense. Uh, looks like we got a couple pass rushers, a couple receivers, a handful of receivers actually that are up here just in case we need that to be replaced. But as far as the things that we're looking to replace, it would all depend on who resigns back, who we could afford. We might end up needing a third quarterback, so it might be somebody undrafted. We'll see what these combine grades are looking like. I will scout this seventh round prospect, though. Nothing much. And halfback wise, depending on if we can get the two back that we want back. Otherwise, we will go ahead and look at the seventh rounders for this position as well. Mm, seventh and sixth round, okay. Chauncey Derby, late sixth round projected, early third round talent. Elusive back at 21 years old from Nebraska, ball carry vision, carry and juke move all at B plus. Somebody put on the radar. Back into these negotiations. We want more money. Let's just go up, let's just go up $2 million to see if we'll accept that one. 119 million. Again? Bro, I swear, like I, I even kind of do one, you know, just do something in my free time. Just let a simulation run by. Why not? This has to be the hardest player to sign in history. He just never wants to sign anything. All right, well, with a little bit more cash space in mind, I mean, he's gonna get franchise tagged for the season anyway. We'll go ahead and offer a little bit more money to Nolan Reagan. He wants more money. Uh, I 
think we will go ahead and try to bring back Deshaun Elliott. He wants four years though. I'm gonna try to see if we can lower the money if possible. I don't know, by 33, he should be starting to regress and regress pretty bad. So we'll just offer that. We'll see what Michael wants. I can offer two years. He's not looking for that much money. Lower it a little bit so you can get him. All right. G off Coleman, I for sure want. I'm gonna go four years because he will probably be taking over the starting right guard position after this season. We will not be bringing back Wyatt Teller most likely. I mean, he's 31 years old. We'll see how much he regresses. But 13 million for uh, for a right guard is like a lot. Gio Coleman isn't that far behind him in overall and six years younger. So he got time to get there. And if all possible, I'd like to get Malik Freeman back. Why not? He's been a pretty good number two for us. A uh, decent offer just wants more salary. Fair enough, I lowered it. All right, here we go. Jackie Holt, a power back, just in case I need to replace that too. Six round uh, projected, late fourth round talent. A minus a carry, stiff arm, and juke move. To have Juke moving your top three and be a power back, that's a pretty, he's gonna be a really good, he's gonna be a problem. So I'm gonna keep my eyes on Jackie Holt too now. Now another thing I wanted to do is look at the late round tight ends as well. We might be losing one, if not both of those. Let's see, anybody worth anything? It's like Ron Powell, a possession tight end out of Kansas, 22 years old. B plus spec catch, B catching traffic and B minus catching. So he's gonna catch the ball. That's all I need you to do really. I, I like that. And there we go. I changed the defense up. We only give up 24 points. I'll take it. We won 30 to 24 here against Green Bay. The New Orleans defense might just fit our play style a little bit more. 264 and three touchdowns for Jordan Love. 320 and three touchdowns for Justin Fields, who has been having a phenomenal season, by the way. Shout out to Swift for the touchdown, 74 yards, and Sanders for the touchdown. But he's been playing great this year. Got an actual uh, playbook that allows him to throw the ball. He's finally doing what I wanted him to do. Uh, in the other playbook, a touchdown for AR. But how did we do it 123? You know exactly how. Asante Samuel Jr. I looked at his race. He finally got an upgrade this past week. He's got pretty good man coverage, high 70, 79, 80. We got like 64 zone coverage though. So we found the problem. I'm starting a corner with 64 zone coverage. I think you can draft a rookie in the fifth round with better zone coverage than that. So we gotta get that up. That's what he's gonna be working on, nothing but zone coverage. Uh, until next Christmas. But Matt Lofton, the rookie, getting his first sack of his career. And we looking up to right the ship, get some more dubs. Because we was two and two and five. It's time to get going. There we go. Got GL Coleman to sign back. Went ahead and up the years and up the money. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can get Malik Freeman back too. Up a little bit of money. 7.5. Cool three year deal. There we go. Welcome to the squad back. And there we go, y'all. The winning streak is coming back. But of course, this was the Patriots. You know we handle them. We handle our business all the time against them. 227, four touchdowns for Justin Fields. We let Wilson get off on the yards a little bit, 320, but we also got two touchdowns to wrap it up. 80 rushing yards and a touchdown for Colin Hill, who did his thing, but it's not enough when we play the Patriots. But they have to do pull out all the stops. They got to do some extra stuff. A.R. Brown, Mims, Dexter, and De'Ami Brown all with a touchdown catch. This is a great way to bounce back from a season that was starting off slow and terribly. The defense is finally answering back. We just had them in the wrong playbook. They wasn't listening. They didn't tell me that though, bro. They wasn't in my ear like, coach, wrong playbook, coach. Matt Lofton getting the second sack of the season since we switched over already. Let's see if we can keep this win streak going, y'all. I'm ready. All right, let's see if we can start some stuff with these some of these younger players. Get the younger ones signed two years. Let me get you three years. Let me lower that money just a little bit. Come on now. You know you want to stay. Ah, salary needs improvement. All right, fair enough. JJ, you get a fourth year. Let me get a little bit less money, though. Come on. Ah, all right, going to keep renegotiating re here with Michael. Give him a little bit more money than you accept. That's that's more than what you're asking for, fam. And then the shot. Here go Deshaun Elliott's offer. We're giving him a little bit more than what he wants. I'm gonna come back to the team. Somebody grateful. I appreciate that, Elliot. And there we go, y'all. Another dub, 27 to 13 here against the Dolphins. Gave up 10 points in that fourth quarter, but it did not even matter, bro. The defense has been balling recently ever since the defensive change. Schemes apparently mean a lot. 269, three touchdowns and a pick for Fields. Tua, 227 with a touchdown. We sacked them four times. The defense was playing immaculate. 
and we was able to do everything we needed to do to go ahead and get the dub today. Deami Brown leading us in receptions today, eight for 96. The touchdown goes to Mims and Brown, both uh, AR Brown, not Deami Brown. But I'm super proud of this defense, but they've come a long way. Elliot, once again, leading in tackles. Uh, this dude was supposed to be like, you know, a ball hog and all that stuff. No, he played more like a strong safety than a free safety, which if I remember correctly, he was strong safety. We moved him to free safety because his overall was just that good at the time when we needed the backup. And he became our starter. So, hey, this is what happens when you got two strong safeties up there. They can really beast the feast and all the tackles. Best believe they're going to get made. Quentin Williams, two more sacks on the season. And INT finally goes to Sly Cooper as he gets his first of the season. I need some more for me. And there we go. We are on a winning streak now, baby. It don't even matter. The defense gave up more yards. They didn't let them score. 35 to 21 here. Another game under 30 points. 235 yards, three touchdowns here for Justin Fields. Trey Lance, 234, two touchdowns, three picks. Held them very, uh, very minimal, but they held us to almost nothing as well. At least Swift scored a touchdown. Uh, dang, Trey Lance rushed for one, two, but that don't matter because they lost. That's what really matters. Nine for 94 and touchdown for DeJuan Ward. We got AR Brown for 90 yards and a touchdown. Mim scored a touchdown and Dexter dropped him two. That boy was on a hot streak earlier, so he's got to be either leading the team in touchdowns or, you know, up there for real. He's got a lot of touchdowns this season. And if you look at our defense, they played immaculate today. Otis, 10 tackles total. We had a bunch of sacks come in, one and a half for Otis, one for the rookie, Matt Lofton. Again, I don't know how he did so much playing time. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, I really don't know how he did so much playing time. Asante Samuel Jr., Geno Stone, and Jerry McCrary all finally getting picks. That's what I like to see. DBs getting interceptions. And as we back out, we're about to go over to the playoff picture, but you can see we've really turned the season around six and five, but Buffalo still 11 and 0. Still has not lost. I know for sure they are the, yep, they're the number one seed up there. And as of right now, we ain't even in the playoffs still. We turned the season around, did pretty good, but we're still not even the seventh seed. A lot of more work to do. And that's how you keep the win streak going in the fourth quarter. The game is on the line. You're down 28 17, and you grab your big boy balls and you throw up 18 points, 35-28, and the Jets come out with the double over, over the Raiders here. 291 and two touchdowns for a pick for Justin Fields. We held trash to only 264 with three touchdowns. Also intercepted him and sacked him twice. DeAndre Swift went off for 118 with a touchdown. Freeman, 4.6, a carry for a touch. Josh Jacobs, we let go loose. But even that wasn't enough to stop us, man. A.R. Brown, 8 for 108. Love to see that. Mims and Dexter both in touchdowns once again. Spread the love around to all the receivers. They all deserve it. They all beastly. Deshaun Elliott with 10 tackles uh, leading the way. Who got the sack this time? Did that rookie get another sack? Nah, not this time. Kenny Edwards getting a half with Devon Alexander. And Otis getting him one. For their, who was the interception to today? Geno Stone once again coming through with a pick. I'm telling you, these two low-key playing like reverse roles. Geno playing like a free and Elliott playing like a strong safety. You might have to just flip their positions because they playing different. Oh, maybe they'll even play even better in the other role. Who knows? As we come here and look at the playoff picture, we still ain't in it, dog. Like, we've been on a really good win streak. Let's go look at the standings because we still are yet to be in the playoff picture. Uh, I think now we are 7-5. Bill still 12 and 0, so I mean the division is basically out of reach. I think they've already uh, they've clinched the division, uh, so I guess you know kudos to them. I ain't trying to see the win though. You can see them, Baltimore right there. The Texans are there. The Colts are the first wild card. Titans are the second wild card, and the Steelers are the third wild card with the Bengals right behind them over top of us. So it's a really steep race. It's not like it's just everybody's beastly. It's just a lot of teams that are seven and five. That are also in the same division as people that are also doing better so it's gonna be a tight race and here we go yet another dub ski 30 to 27 this time uh deep is still doing good still having a lot over 30 cents kurt bear 239 and we've seen him before dude was a beast i mean his rookie season he led the league in yards and led this vikings team to the playoffs this year they they slacking they only got about three wins um but Hey, what can you do? If the team around you ain't playing good, the team around you ain't playing good. They got Marlon Mack in the backfield, who did pretty good on the ground, but Swift was actually able to get into the end zone 16 for 75. They have T. Higgins at receivers, who actually went off today. Gabriel Davis backing him up, but Dexter, 9 for 73 with two more touchdowns to the resume. The stats for this season got to be crazy. And then defensively, got that boy Sly Cooper leading us in tackles this time, nine tackles. You know, I don't really don't like DBs leading in tackles. But today we'll go ahead and let it slide, man. 
uh, sacks. We still got one and a half by steals. There goes Matt Lofton, the rookie, once again, to get in the backfield. If he ain't rookie of the year, somebody else did something beastly. Because, I mean, three full sacks on the season when you ain't even starting, I think that should be looked at, too. The fact that he ain't even a starter. And we're finally into that playoff hunt, baby, right there at the sixth seed, staring it down, trying to move up. I mean, the highest we're probably going to go is the fifth seed. Well, yeah, the highest we can't go is the fifth seed because the Bills have already clinched the division. So uh, we'll be looking at a wild card game if we can make it in. But with the Bills still undefeated, coming into this game, three games left in the season, they are still 13. Oh, they finally did lose, actually. So they're 12-1. and one. I did say we might watch a game. I think this might be the last game that, uh, against a good opponent. As we come over here, look at the depth chart, or not depth chart, the standings real quick. We do have the Chiefs and Bears still left. So if I go to the AFC West, the Chiefs are seven and six. They're not that bad. Uh, NFC North, the Bears are eight and five. Okay, so actually all three are against potential division winners. Uh, yeah, I say why not? We might do it to all three. Go in, just simulate through uh, to the fourth quarter. Something clutch happening at the end. We might watch it. Let's go ahead. We'll start with that uh, with that idea for this Bills game. All right, and now we will come in here to the broadcaster booth. No headset in today. And we were just kind of trying to go through this, not as quickly as possible, but see if anything interesting happens throughout the game. Uh, can we pull out a dub here against Buffalo? We lost to them the first game of the season, and this team has been strong. Obviously, as you saw, up until last week, we're undefeated. Finally lost their first game last week. I have secured the spot, in my eyes at least, as the number one seed as we get a touchdown there early. Dang, I, didn't even, I wasn't even looking up to see who that was. That was a six-yard touchdown pass to Amon St. Brown. But, yeah, like I said, they've secured their number one spot. They're for sure going to be a top seed team, and they're going to be tough in the playoffs. So should we see them three times? Who knows? It depends on how deep we can get into the playoffs ourselves and if we can hold our own, and this is going to be a good test to that. Now, so far, we've seen nothing but three and outs from Buffalo. Our offense has moved the ball really well. Third and 14 here, six-yard pass to Mims, and we will punt it right back. Three-yard rush by Singletary. Looks like they're going to get the run game popping. With the snow out, that's probably your best bet. You probably shouldn't be throwing too much in the snow. Uh, the run game should be your main means of attack, runs and penalties. But you see here, they're actually passing the ball. Gage catches the 20-yard pass to get them in the red zone. Second and three, an eight-yard rush. First and goal, and they rush for a touchdown. Jelani Richards ties up the game for Buffalo. Can New York get back the lead? Inside of goal territory, first and goal. Three yard touchdown, Jelani Richards once again. And it is a 14 to 7 lead. This defense isn't playing as good as we've seen it play sometimes, but we got to hope the offense can get back right. And another punt right before the half is not a good way to start out. And it looks like they will punt right back as well. It looks like nobody will be able to score here before the half. Fourth and eight, punt back to them, throw away. Second and 10, negative two yard rush, and we are at halftime. Your penalty against the defense. First and 10 in the red zone. Can we score once again? Denzel Mims, a six yard pass. Running with Swift as they have this whole drive, and Malik Freeman will cap it off. It's kind of like a bad thing to uh, DeAndre Swift. He did carry the weight for most of that drive, catching a couple passes and running the ball at least, you know, seven, seven, eight times on that drive. But Freeman will get the touchdown. You know, we love to share the love right here. I'm sure Swift ain't too mad. But now we've got a tie ball game. About to head into the fourth quarter with the Jets having the ball. Here we go, knocking on the red zone door again. Malik Freeman, seven yard rush. Can the Jets get in the end zone and take their first or second lead of the ball game? I should say they did score first. Second and goal, a four yard rush. DeAndre Swift gets his touchdown right back and they take the lead. We are six. And a half minutes left in the game. Can the Bills take back the lead and put on a drive? The defense has actually been locking up some and actually going to work. 24-yard pass to Russell Gage Jr. They didn't like giving up the lead. Looks like they're trying to answer right back. Six-yard rush by Singletary. Third and one. Pass knocked down fourth and one. Incomplete passes. They went for it. We're seeing under four minutes. Jets with the ball. Four-yard rush by DeAndre Swift. Another run. 
Another one to get just enough for the first down. Thrown away. Thrown away again. I don't know why they didn't keep running the ball, but five yard pass to Dexter. And they will punt it back, I'm going to assume. And with that being said, we got us a ball game, y'all. Let's go in and watch this last minute and a half and see if the Jets defense can hold them. Game on the line. What will the Jets defense pull up here? Josh Allen in the backfield trying to lead his team to a victory. Dropping back, quick throw out to the tight end there. And he's game tackled. That's McCrary on the tackle. No huddle offense here, of course. You know, save your three timeouts if you can. You need a touchdown here. Throwing out short once again, a Singletary and a flag is down. That might be a face mask call. Sly Cooper with the face mask there, giving them a free 15 yards. And that is detrimental as that puts them on their side of the field without much work at all. Haven't used the timeout yet. They still got a full minute on the clock. Jets defense needs to lock up. Going out, quick throw, and he will get out of bounds after a gain of 10, moving them closer. Gage Jr. being a huge target on the opposite side of the field, where Sly is not. You guys see Samuel with some better coverage. There's a good tackle there by McCrary. Out of bounds to stop the clock, but not many yards game there at their 36. There we go. We're seeing some pass rush finally, and they almost got to him. That's a pick. That is a pick. Who is it on the picks? On the, oh, that's that's Felix. The, is that the rookie? The rookie Felix with the pick? There it is. Darrell Felix, the rookie that we drafted last year, third round with our last pick, comes in against the clutches interception of his life. We almost got the pressure there. He tried to throw out a sack, and now the Jets just need to run out the clock. A first down in this ball game is over. Handoff Swift outside, getting tackled down inbounds, but there is a penalty flag down that might be holding. Third and six. Do you run? Do you pass? Personally, I might pass to just try to get the first down. It looks like they will just go with a handoff, a little bit delayed. If anything, lost the yard there. That'll be Buffalo's final timeout. So you're punting back to them under about 30 seconds left with no timeouts. 28 seconds, no timeouts. The ball has to go deep, Josh Allen. What are you going to do? You're going to drop it to your tight end. He tackled in bounds, and the clock will keep running. So we'll see a hurry up. This will probably be the last play of the game. A lot of time just took off. Nobody's open. He will ditch it down short, knock it out, so there will be four seconds left. They got time for one Hail Mary. Throw is up. It's tipped, and it's... Ooh, I thought it was picked off. I was about to get hyped, and then it looked like it was about to go to their hands. But that'll be the ball game. It hit the ground. We have beaten the Bills, one and one of them in the season. Too bad the division's already, you know, not up for grabs. But hey, you are making our case stronger. Trying to get to the fifth seed. We we'll go ahead and check out these stats from the post game uh, box score: 23 for 35, 21 for 35. So pretty identical stats here. Almost the same amount of yards. Just two touchdowns were able to be converted from Justin Fields. None from Josh Allen. DeAndre Swift had a ball game today, 123 yards and a touchdown. Richards went off for them too, two touchdowns. We just didn't see Singletary do much. Uh, Gage, I mean, Osanto Samuel Jr. went off. Nine for 116 in the touchdown. You see, where's the, where, there, there you go, Stefan Diggs, locked up by Sly Cooper. Locked up. We just need somebody to lock up the other side. You see, uh, Davis gathers, led us in tackles with eight. We had two sacks from Franklin Myers, one from Quinn Williams. It would have been nice to see one there at the end. But I'll take the huge pick from the rookie, bro, out of Notre Dame. Did his thing. Shout out to you. We must have been a Dom defense for him to see the field. Because I don't think he's not my starting slot. So we definitely had to be a Dom for him to get on the field. And as y'all can see, man, we moved into that fifth seed. And now he's got us playing the Chiefs, which is kind of interesting. Because, uh, y'all see who we got to play. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. M's in my bank account. What? Dubs on the skull sheet. What? Dubs on the skull sheet. Ever since the bye week, we changed the defense and we were playing lights out. 38 to 21 here against the Chiefs. Beasting and beasting. You see Justin Fields, 333. Four more touchdowns added to the ledger. We got sacked one time. We had to come in and get a little pass. And he got him seven yards. Mahomes held him to 152. How many times y'all can say y'all defense shut down Patrick Mahomes? Never. Never. 
But 19 for 78 here for DeAndre Swift with a touchdown. We held their run game in check. DeAndre Brown went off for 84 and a touch. Uh, Mims went off for 79. You see, hey, Eric Ebron was good with you, bro. I would bring you to the squad, but I got this dude named Dexter going off. He's getting touchdowns like every week. That's double digit touchdown for the week. Matt Holloway, the rookie, got his first touchdown of his career. That's got to be the first one, bro. I, I would notice if he got another one before this. First touchdown of the career. Shout out to you. We got him, what again? That was literally Mr. Irrelevant. This was the seventh round pick. He balled out in preseason. I think he, in my mind right now, is above Cameron Hitchens, who we got the round before him. And you can see he's getting his first career touchdown here. Shout out to him. Great, uh, great story, really. Great development, great story. He's turned into a really good receiver for us. He's just buying his time. He'll probably be up there eventually, should we have to let go of some of these other receivers. But Jerry McCrary led in tackles. Slot corner. That's I don't know if that that's probably even worse than the DB leading in tackles. The the slot DB that barely get on the field led us in tackles. But Sante Sammy Jr. finally coming in, putting in work, getting a pick for the day. And I love that none of their receivers were up topping uh yards, it was just a tight end. So both corners were playing lights out. We've been upgrading in zone coverage recently. He's finally at a 70 zone coverage. As we look at the standings here, we have clinched a playoff spot as well as the Bills and Ravens. The Bills might not even get the first round seed seen a little three-game losing streak the Ravens are on an eight-game winning streak just like us so they might take the number one seed the Bills might drop to the two and right now I think we pretty much yeah locked ourselves away at the five seeds a lot of the other teams that were at the time of uh, us all being tied at like what was it it's a couple of games ago so it's like eight and five we were all tied at a lot of them went on losing streaks a couple of other teams have won their way in and now there's a huge tie of eight and seven teams trying to fight their way in but we've at least clinched our spot as the five seed. So no matter what happens in this last game, we will be the five. It will just be depending on who our four seed is that we'll be playing. So I'll see you guys at the box score and the big reveal on who we play on Wild Card Weekend. And here we go. Wrapping up the season with a loss, uh, 21 to 18. Still didn't give up 30 points, so we can't blame it on the defense. The offense was a little slow here today. Um, Trevor Lock or Tavares Lockridge, 232 and a touchdown. Uh, led his team to an 11 5 record so we'll probably hopefully maybe we'll see them in the super bowl you know if we can make it and they can make it that'd be great to get our revenge on this on this l 282 for justin fields rushing they got alvin kamara now so he's got 77 yards and a touchdown for them our run game was pretty much non-existent from swift and all the other supporting cats khalil casey went off big for a touchdown as well with 131 yards A.R. Brown, 78, Swift, 55 out of the backfield. Defensively, Otis German, 10 tackles. Amante Samuel Jr., 10 tackles, because he was chasing around the receiver all game. That's why he had so many tackles. If he had covered better, he wouldn't have had so many tackles. Franklin Myers with half, one and a half sacks. Lucas with half a sack. And yeah, that's how the season will go. So now it's on to reveal who are we playing in the postseason. And it looks like... Kansas City, even though they lost to us, were able to move up to the three seed. And that's most likely because the Colts at the four seed are eight and eight. So uh, not too many good teams other than basically us, the Bills and the Ravens. But I mean, if we win, I'm sure the Bills will be able to beat the Bengals and then it'll be up to whether the Steelers upset Kansas City or not. But we can either be seeing one of those two teams, Baltimore or Buffalo, in the second round. As long as we take care of business in the wildcard round. It's not a for sure win yet. And then look, just like I said, Tavares Lockridge read his Bears to the number one seed on the NFC side. And as far as teams that we played in the Super Bowl, the Giants are still over there at the three seed, but Seattle's not in it no more. So there could be possibly a new team making it for the NFC as well. Justin Fields, 4,459 yards, 37 touchdowns, and 11 picks. As we go on to look at his career stats, that's got to be career highs in just about everything. Passing yards, his best season yet. Touchdowns, top for his best season yet. And he did better with interceptions than that year that he had 37 before in 2022. This is a career year for him, like I said. And we'll see if it results into maybe an MVP voting or at least get some MVP votes being in the top three, maybe at least. We'll have to see. DeAndre Swift, I think this is his first thousand yard rushing season with the team. If not, he did it last year. Let me pull up the stats. Yeah, he did it last year with a lot more carries, so he did it more efficiently this year and ripped off a bunch more touchdowns, almost getting into double digits. We saw only three from Freeman, four for Sanders in the power back role. What did the rookie do? Only about four for 12, but he probably barely played. Receiving-wise, A.R. Brown, 1,205 yards. Uh, as you see, he's glitched out. I can't upgrade him anymore. It says there's no points left in the bucket, but he's got eight upgrade points. I don't understand it. 
but in a passing offense now, less center on the run, 95 receptions, career high, yards was a career high, only nine touchdowns, so that's not a career high for him, but still pretty high. And that's gotta be, you know, up there in the league as far as yards go. Maybe not receptions, there's probably some 100 yard reception leaders. Deami Brown, 907, five touchdowns. I told y'all, Dexter Maddox is gonna drop 10 on y'all. 10 touchdowns, 798 yards, Mims 705 with six touchdowns. The ball was spread around well. You see all of them over 70 catches. Uh, nobody reached 100, but I like that distribution. Uh, let's, let's, let's not skip over the block. Who gave up the most sacks? We about to embarrass somebody. Who gave up my sacks? 13, oh my. Oh, it's too late, I already signed you back. Ooh, I should have checked the stats first. He would have been gone. But anyways, defense next. Otis 116, almost gave it up to Ellie. There's a lot of double-digit tackle games for him. 115 on his end, sacks. I know we had a bunch, come on now. Somebody had double digits. John Franklin Myers hit me with 11. Uh, Williams hit me with nine, the rookie. Matt Lofting finished off with four. That's gotta be rookie of the year, dog. Show me them awards. We only had two uh, interceptions. Uh, from Gallagher, Samuel Jr. and Stone, even though I ragged on Samuel Jr. a lot. It looks like Cooper gave up more catches than him, though. Uh, you see Cooper up. Oh, did it one too many times. Cooper gave up 42. Samuel gave up 38. So it might have been a little misplaced. Deshaun Elliott gave up 47, though. Ah, so them games tight ends was really decent and feasting. The AFC will start on this side. Interception leader of this year was a bunch of people with four sacks. Who's on top? We got 14 by Clyde Claxton, three-year man out of UC, USF for the Bills. Superstar upgraded, 99, 98 overall run stopping left outside linebacker. That's a lot of sacks for a left outside linebacker. I ain't even gonna hold you. Now, uh, NFC wise though, their sack leaders, 17 by Kenny Clark, the veteran showing what he do, getting more than Aaron Donald who only had 16. INT leader was Jeff Okudu. Seven of them. Now your NFL leaders, you see A.R. Brown finished sixth in receiving yards. Devontae Adams, Devin DuVernay, and DJ Moore leading the league in uh, receiving yards and receptions. Look like 95 might have been on top. And it was. Pat Fryermuth and Kenny Gall, they tied him with 95, but they are all on top. Uh, touchdown leader, it looks like might be around 11, 14 by Steven Sims, uh, Kadarius Tooney as well. Did Dexter lead the tight ends though? Nope, Mark Andrews had 11, Evan Ingram had 11, uh, Justin Cunningham, four-year dude out of Mississippi State with the Steelers, normal dev, 83 overall vertical threat, also had 11, and then Dexter came in at fourth. That's all right, you know, and I had higher hopes, but oh well. Joe Mixon led in yards, Nick Chubb, Miles Sanders behind him, touchdowns. How did they get 16 touchdowns? I wish my running back rushed for 16 touchdowns. We had a running offense and my running back didn't even rush for 16 touchdowns. Nick Chubb, Elliott, Mixon, and then passing yards. This is what we came to see. That boy Justin Fields the made it on the top. We put him in a passing offense and he done beasted and feasted. Dak Prescott, Jordan Love behind him. Uh, 37 touchdowns isn't on top. You see Jordan Love had 40 right there. Uh, Russell Wilson and Lamar Jackson both had 43. How, did, how does he put up them stats with Baltimore's offense? But Justin Fields was barely getting 3,000 yards. They only had like 33, 20 touchdowns. You see here as a team though, we finished behind the Bengals in total offense. Uh, to put us as the second best offense passing yards wise, we are number one rushing uh, About middle of the pack Slightly above average 28.6 points per game is probably pretty high. Yep. Number two behind Baltimore the number one seed uh, Defensively and as y'all can see here uh, Defense One of the worst we ain't even gonna look at these stats. You see where we are uh, points given up one of the worst in that too, so it's off his leg completely. All right, so next time out, we will be doing a complete run through of the playoffs all the way up until the Super Bowl, where we will watch the games and show the highlights that way instead of me playing them. And hopefully we can go get us another ring. We made it to the fifth seed and made it to the playoffs at 10 and six. When we started out two and five, anything is possible. Let's go for that fifth, fifth ring of the series, fifth ring in a row. And close this thing out and hand it to Man in 22, all right? The reveal video will be out soon at the time of this dropping, hopefully. And let's keep things rocking in the Madden 22. So I love you guys so much. Subscribe if you are new, like the video if you enjoy it. And comment down below what you guys think of the series and ways I can make it better, all right? This is me, your boy, Shump Too Smooth, aka Black Okai, aka Black Okai, King Leo. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.